Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Break Talus Principle 2, the only series where, um, yeah, my joke writer quit, uh, but 1k cheats a lot is usually the punchline of the jokes, so there we go. Anyway, we're here in North 3, the Lost Marshes, the final snowy area of the game, and first thing we're going to do is head into puzzle number one. We won't be solving it yet, uh, we'll be saving this one for last. It was a really hard puzzle to come up with an interesting solution for, but I'm happy with what I got, and we'll see it at the end. So, first thing I wanted to do is just show off this really cool thing you can do here. Normally you would leave the jammer down here, and then jump up into the fan. Uh, but I found out you can do this, which is ultimately useless, but kind of funny. And you can just bring the jammer with you. And it's kind of fun how you can just, like, surf around on top of this uh, gate here. All right, so let's go ahead and, s oh, we're not gonna solve it first. We're going to get the stuff out of it. Again, this is just one of those puzzles that's so simple, you can barely even break it in the first place. All right. And we're actually gonna leave the box here and take the jammer to number two. I tried for quite a while to find a really interesting solution for number two. That kind of made it more unique to the puzzle itself, and this is about the best I could come up with. It's still kind of cool, um, almost like a little mini puzzle in its own right. So we're just going to leave this out here. We ultimately need to jam that second gate, but we can't reach it yet because the first gate is blocking it. So we're going to use this box here. Open the first gate temporarily just so we can target the second one with that. I don't think we've seen anything like this, at least not in the second game. Maybe there's something like that in the first game, where that jammer is still technically targeted on that second gate. Um, so as soon as we open this, they'll both open. And I think that's kind of cool. So there's our first puzzle solved. And we're just going to leave that here for much, much later, and just head on to number three. All right, and here we are in number three. And we're going to use a technique that I like to call um, hole vaulting, because you can use a hole to kind of jump up on top of the wall there, and I really like that name, so I'm going to copyright it and trademark it, so there we go. So we're just going to jump up into the hole, because you can just do that, and then we're going to put it up on top while still connecting that, otherwise we wouldn't be able to get back to the beginning. And we're just going to jump up here. Now we would not be able to grab it from this perspective, but if we go into third person, we can just kind of point our camera right over it and grab it. We're going to use that to get our box out. And if you uh, hole vault right on top of a swap table, you can keep the box inside the hole. Again, I think you can only do this in third person. And then from there, if you jump in just the right way, you can get up on top of it. Just like that. And we're going to swap that for a connector. Let's drop that out of the puzzle and then go solve it real quick. Alright. And we're just going to bring this connector with us all the way up to... I think we want to leave it up near number 6 for later. Alright, just going to leave that right there on top of that, and we're going to head up into number four next. Uh, so number four is one of the most valuable puzzles in this area because it has just tons of items. It's got, I think, three boxes and four connectors. So what we're going to do... Oh, we actually do need to go get a box. I forgot about that. I'll be right back. Alright, and now we're back here. We're just going to leave this right outside and do about half of this puzzle. So we're going to just open this gate with the red. We're going to sacrifice this box to get another connector so we can free the other connector. And we're just going to connect those. Get rid of this connector. 
Oops. Did not mean to do that. I... Hmm, this is tricky. Okay. Maybe... It... Oh yeah, I can just do that. Okay. Phew. Thought I might have soft-locked myself there. Soft-locking is scary when you're doing these episodes because it means you have to redo all of the setup that you've done from all the previous puzzles. So anyway, we're just going to connect that. And get this. Now, if I were to break this connection... Nope. Actually, I would. No, that'd be fine. If I soft-locked myself in here. If I soft-locked myself in here, I would just be able to jump over and open that gate and get back. So we're good. Anyway. I'm just going to go ahead and get lots and lots of boxes. And we're going to use all three boxes here to get the fourth box in. Because we will be needing four boxes in here. I really enjoy box stacking puzzles, and I don't think there's really anything in the base game that delves too deeply into that type of puzzle. At most, you're working with, I think, two boxes in any given puzzle. Uh, but like in this case, we can use three boxes to get up on top of the wall. Uh, but unfortunately, once we're up there, we only have access to two of those boxes because we just can't reach the lowest box from on top. Uh, so using four boxes here, we can get three on top, which allows us to get to the even higher level. Mm, that should be good. See, if I only had three boxes with me, I would not be able to get this third one from here because it's just too low. So now that we can get up on top of here, we're just going to do... Ooh, not what I wanted to do. That's fine. Just got to restack those boxes real quick. Ah. Yeah, these uh, little jump here prompts are usually very useful, except when they want you to jump, like, way over walls. So you got to be careful where you're looking. We'll go down and get the box. Yeah, see, just like that. All right. Two and three. All right, we'll do a less successful jump this time. There we go. And we're just going to grind the rails all the way to the end. This is actually very fun. And I'd love to see a custom puzzle that uses stuff like this. And there we go. Bet you didn't even know 1K is a skateboarder. I always thought it was weird that this puzzle, and there's, I think, one in the north one or south one area coming up, uh, also has a second exit gate near the end. And that's just not really common to see. Like, is it really that hard to just run around this way? Anyway, now with that out of the way, we are going to get two connectors out of this puzzle. And we'll turn this box into a computer. And then we'll just drop both of these out. And then we're going to bring one of these all the way over to number six. Alright, so this is the part that I'm really dreading. Um, ooh, I actually didn't know you could put that directly up there. Alright, well anyway, once we get in here, first thing we got to do is just sacrifice this completely and utterly useless fan to get a much more useful box. And we're just going to put this back in this corner just for later. Okay, so we are going to exploit the same thing that we saw with fans in the last episode, um, where you can kind of like fan surf and jump up. However, there's going to be a little bit of a twist this time. Uh, first, we're going to go need to get that connector, so let's just fan surf out. Okay. And we'll bring this in the puzzle. And this is the part that really, really sucks. So this is going to take me many, many attempts to pull off. I'm going to guess... Ooh, uh... Let's say 53. 
So, uh, yeah, what we need to do is, as you already know, when we put the box on there and jump on at the same time, we get launched really high. Now I need to do that, but also grab this connector as I'm flying up. And the timing is ridiculously tight, and I hate it, hate it, hate it so much, but it's such a cool solution. So, here we go. Ah, uh, I actually grabbed it. Where did it go? Um... So last time the connector just completely disappeared on me, it popped up up on top of here somehow, like it had just teleported straight up. Let's have a look around. Yeah, that's a common problem, uh when I'm doing this fan surfing trick, is sometimes the objects will just disappear from existence and then pop in somewhere else later. It's uh, really spooky. Is it behind the puzzle? Maybe it got launched backwards. Or maybe it's under the puzzle. No. Oh my god, is that it? Oh my god, how did it end up back here? Alright, and let's resume. Yes, finally, screw you box, screw you fan. I have no idea how many attempts that was. All right, now that we're up here, all we gotta do is connect that to that. Look at that, we barely put any thought into this puzzle whatsoever. Simple as that, it's already done. Okay. And with that finally done, we are going to now get back up one more time. Thankfully, this time we don't need to actually take anything with us. His experience must be very similar to Athena's in the simulation. There's one there we go. Though. Athena was alone. And the reason that we put that inverter down in that other corner is because we're going to now drop down here. And we're going to connect it. And we're going to leave it right up on top of this corner, right about here. Yep, that'll be good. And we're going to run all the way back to number two and get that jammer that we left back there earlier. And we're going to bring it up to number five. So I'll see you there. Okay, and we're just going to go ahead and jam this gate. This is going to be an extremely simple solve. We're just going to connect that 
And then we just got to get the right position here to connect the jammer or the uh, laser up here. Oh, there it is. Right there. And then we just unjam that and we're done. And with that out of the way, that is five of ten puzzles done. And we're just going to go ahead and bring another connector here up to number six. And we're just going to get some lasers ready so that we can cheese uh, the north lost puzzle up there in that corner. Alright, and I promise this is the last time we need to fan surf to the top of this puzzle. I'm sorry, Box. I didn't mean to insult you earlier. Will you forgive me? Oh, he almost forgave me. Yeah, thank you. All right, and we're going to take this connector, and we're going to drop it down inside here. I'm just going to grab that box from up there. Just like that. Connect it to green. And then we're going to take this connector here. And we're going to connect it like so. And I just need to go grab one more connector. I'll be right back. Alright, and we'll just connect that here and leave this right on top of this ledge. Just like that, and we're going to head up to North Lost Puzzle. Okay, this one's going to be pretty straightforward. We're just going to grab this to open the first gate. We're going to bring a connector in. We're going to swap it to get the jammer. And actually jam it. So I think what I'm going to do to avoid having to run all the way back to six and then back here to solve this one, I'm going to pre-connect this one to that green laser first. There we go. And that's going to save us a little bit of running here, because I don't think I can get that laser from this area. I probably could over that wall right there, but anyway. We're going to connect those there, and then we jump up on the swap table, and that lets us put it right up on top of the wall here. And there's another one solved. Okay. I'm just going to use this. Oh, we don't even need to get that. Use that to get out. out Alright, I will meet you guys over at number seven. Cities where people lived for thousands of years. Cities with their own history, their own culture. All of it lost under the waves. If they'd been less greedy, they could have kept all that. I don't think we can pass moral judgment on an entire species based on the decisions of a handful of leaders. But I do think they made a mistake. They stopped caring about what they built. They stopped seeing the romance of civilization. Okay, this is probably going to be our fastest solve yet. We just do that, and this. Ooh, or not. Dang it. I was really hoping that was going to be a really fast solve. Unfortunately, I need to give it one more try. How about this? Almost. Man, it was going to look so cool and everything. Yeah, that's what I wanted to do. Okay, now with seven out of the way, we just need to get the jammer out. Good. Let's get some measurements from this particle cloud. We're going to leave this right on this corner here without it falling off. There we go. 
I don't know if we've used this trick before in any previous videos. Uh, we're just going to leave this right on top of the pedestal. On top of the pedestal. Alright, and then we can grab it from on top of that wall in a minute. There we go. Okay. And we're just going to bring this right over onto number 8. Wrong way. Right onto number 8. Alright, and we are just going to jam that right about there. Not jam, drill. Okay. And I need to go grab that box from wherever I left it, so I'll be right back. I decided to drop by number six real quick and bring a connector with me because I think I'm going to need it later, later to get enough boxes. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab this. Oops. Ah. I think I actually put this too close. There we go. That'll be easier. We'll just grab that, turn it into a box, and we'll head back to number eight with this. Okay, and we're just going to go ahead and smuggle this box into number eight. Ah, missed. There we go. We just need to do a little bit of housekeeping before we break this. So first, let's get our clone out. Oh yeah, let's actually properly enter eight. I always forget we have to do that. Okay. So we'll leave him right there, and then we'll use him to swap this for the driller. We're going to drill right in the center, right there. And then we're going to want to take this box and kind of put it right on the edge, so it's kind of leaning off of it. But the problem is we need it to stay there, and that's kind of tricky. It likes to just jump like that. So we're just going to wait until it jumps in such a way that it stays up. Come on, stay there. Yeah, good enough. Okay, with that right there, we're just going to stand right about here. And I'm a big fan of this solution here. It might take me a few tries to get it right, but we're just going to bonk right off his head onto the platform. Oh, dude, first try. Nice. That trick, while not as hard as getting the connector up on top of number six, was definitely second place for difficulty in this one, so I'm glad it only took me one try there. Anyway, let's go ahead and take that box and bring it up top to get it back out. Unfortunately, I tried so hard to be able to get the clone out of this puzzle and use them in other places, because I really wanted to use the clone to break other puzzles. Unfortunately, it... Oop, didn't mean to do that. Unfortunately, it just doesn't seem possible. I'm wondering if they, like, programmed the clones differently in this area than they did in the first north area. Uh, because as soon as, no matter how you leave this puzzle, as soon as you leave, it just deactivates them. So, unfortunately, you just can't get them out of the puzzle. You can get them out, but then he'll just deactivate. So we're just going to bring this box right over to the south puzzle here. All right, and we just need to go back and get that driller as well. All right, and we'll just drill that like so. We're going to have to solve about half this puzzle. So we're just going to leave this right here and open the first gate. Swap this for a jammer so we can get that other one through. And we're going to pop the fan on here. And jump up top. 
Swap that for the connector. Connect that like so. And we just need to take that driller, swap it for the box, and do another fan surf. Like so. And there we go. One more puzzle to go. So first things first, we need to get this box back out of the puzzle, and we're going to do that by leaving it right on this swap table. Swap tables are kind of broken. You can do so many interesting things with them. For example... And they act like pedestals where you can't jump when you're on top of them, so we need to find other solutions to get up top, like that. So I need to jump across from this platform here. Just like that. No! Jump here, curse you. Okay. Grab that box before it falls. We're just going to bring this over to the gold puzzle real quick. Alright, and this one here is another cornucopia of items. Uh, there's what? There's a box, there's a connector, there's an inverter, a fan. There's a second fan around the corner in the back, but we don't end up using it. And inside here, there's a driller, another box, and another connector. So that's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight items in this whole puzzle altogether. And that might be a record so far. Um, but all we are going to do is use this laser to get into the second area. Then we're going to sacrifice this to get the inverter to get the third area open. We're going to grab this box and bring it back. Yeah, see, there's the fan right there. And then we're just going to grab all three boxes. Now, this is a very high danger area right there, right here, because uh, right over this wall... Oop, didn't mean to do that. Right over this wall is the ending area, and if we fall in there, we have to reset absolutely everything, and that would be deeply, deeply upsetting. <laughs> so I really need to be careful and not fall into there. Since uh, the gold puzzles are not activated yet, if I fall in there, then it's just soft to lock. I have to reset the whole area. Okay, so give me a couple minutes, and we're going to move seven boxes into number one. Alright, and now we have count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven boxes. So let's go ahead and just drop all these inside the puzzle right now. Let's go ahead and take that one. Come on. What, what is in there? Come on. You can do it. 
No, oh, okay, we need to get closer. That, no. Okay, that shoot, I don't know about that. That worked, okay. There's too many boxes. And we're gonna need to move this one more time. Okay. Now with all seven boxes in here, we can finally solve the final puzzle here. Uh, like I said before, I really like uh, box stacking puzzles, and this one is, I think, just a really cool one in its own right. And uh, we're going to need to just do this real quick. Okay. I really wish the editor was out for Talos Principle 2, because if it was, I would definitely make like a greatest hits of this series, where it's all of the puzzles that I've broken in unique ways. Um modified to solve them like I've broken them. For example, this one would have seven boxes in it and no jammer. Because I think it is a really cool and unique solution. So we just need to come up here, stack that there, grab a box, put it on top of there. And now we can remove the lower box. And then we can free up the box right there now and get our box back using the fan. And this is the part I don't always remember, so we want to grab... Yes, I, yep, I got it now. Okay, take that, and then we will take the upper box, use it to jump up one level higher, and place that there, and there we go. I just think that's a really super cool solution, having to, like, stack the boxes through the fan, or through the uh, gate like that. And then we can even take this one step further... And if we sacrifice one of these to get our fan back, we can even throw a few of them up with us. And we can even get up on top of number one. Utterly useless, but we do it because we can. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, get the sparks here, and then the easter eggs, and finish up this area once and for all. We're at over an hour now of recording, so I will be happy to finally be done with this one. So our first spark is going to be way over here on the other side of puzzle number three. And you'll notice I'm bringing a box with me. Um, I will explain in a little bit why I'm doing that, but you'll see. All right, here's our first spark, and the next one is going to be way over on the other side of the area, behind puzzle number six, so I will meet you there. All right, so our second spark is up here on top of this wall, and it would normally be inaccessible if it weren't for this fan and button. So we're just going to go ahead and plop the box on the button there. We'll get our next spark. Alright, and the first easter egg is going to be up here along the coastline. It's a little hard to find, so I'm hoping I'm not going to have too much trouble getting to it. Alright, and as the coastline curves to the left, we should find it right up here in a clearing. Yep, here it is. It's the loved, it's the hated, it's the recorder device. Uh, so this one is kind of infamous from Talos Principle 1. Um, a lot of people just didn't really like how this worked, me included. It uh, added, introduced skill and timing as part of puzzles where it didn't exist before, and I just don't think it was a good fit for Talos's gameplay. Uh, but anyway, I was really hoping you'd be able to use it to uh, cheese some of the other puzzles if it worked as an actual recorder. Unfortunately, it's broken, so that's all we get out of it. And our next easter egg is going to be back down by 6, where we got that other spark. And hidden back here in a little pile of rocks is Devolver Digital's famous mascot. Why am I explaining this like everyone doesn't already know who Volvi is? He's been in like a billion games, come on. Uh, but anyway, fun fact, he was originally drawn by Ronathan Trodfield back in the 80s but wasn't actually put into his first game until 1993 because of the fall of the Berlin Wall. 100% serious. Uh, Melroy Clarkton did a really good video essay about it. Uh, go look it up. Watch it. It's a fascinating story. But uh, anyway, he would come over here and step on this button for you and let you get that spark, uh, but I just wanted to wait until the Easter egg portion before showing him off, so that's why I brought this box here. 
But anyway, yep. Everybody knows and loves him, Valvi. They always call him the uh, big three video game mascots. Nintendo has Mario, Sega has Sonic, and Devolver has Valvi, of course. He likes sitting on his little button like that. Okay, next Easter egg over here on the other side of eight. All right, and overlooking puzzle number eight here, we will find yet another set of snowmen. Probably our last set of snowmen, seeing as this is our last snowy area. I don't really know how that would work if we found more. <laughs> But, I don't know. Maybe we'll see. Alright, on to the next easter egg, and that is behind puzzle number south. And here we go, another purple hologram. This one is more tetrominoes and a star, which were all the different kinds of sigils you could find in Talos Principle 1. Pretty cool. Okay. And as everybody can probably guess by now, our last easter egg is the kitty face. Once again, it is in a very hard-to-get-to position, and once again, you can only really see it in photo mode. Uh, it's under one of the pillars there that uh, holds up the train line, so I will meet you over there. Alright, and on this desolate, lonely spit of land out here, we're just going to have to go as far out into the water as we can get without drowning. Right about there should work. And go into photo mode. Uh, photo mode. Is it bound? Give me a second. Yeah, it's definitely bound. That's weird. Oh, there we go. That's interesting. I never knew that. I guess uh, photo mode doesn't work if you are too far underwater. Let's just slide over here to this pillar, go underwater, and we will find Kitty! Alright, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get to the tower and finish this area. And as usual, that's going to do it for this episode. Um, if you've made it this far into the series so far, thank you. You're awesome. If you have any comments, if you have any feedback, anything like that, just leave a comment. I always read them, I always appreciate them, and I always take them into account for uh, later episodes. So go ahead and meet us next time where we will head into the megastructure for the second time. Peace. So whenever you're on a surface like this, you can always double tap to disengage from it. And since we are on the ceiling right now, we will just fall straight up, in our case, uh, to whatever's above us. And we can exploit that right now to jump up onto this, above this gate here. And then all we've got to do now is to get back onto that surface.